All right, the final tool we have in G Suite is Google Sites. This allows us to make quick and easy websites and also gives us a web editing tool for students to use to create websites. To get there, you can either open a site you already have in your Google Drive or you need to make a new one. So I go to New, More, and Google Sites is in my list of More. Again, because I'm creating it in this G Suite ILP folder, that's where it's going to live. So I'm going to make my new Google Site. It's going to generate it very quickly. And you'll see it come in. I'm going to name this page. And all changes are saved to my drive. So they save automatically again, just as usual. I can get rid of that title if I don't want it up there, or I can leave it there. It automatically grabs it from my title page. If we want to add editors, we can edit collaboratively, just as we can in all other G Suite files up there. And then we can just uh, get to uh, making our page. If I want to change the image in the background, I have images that they have already preloaded for me from this gallery. Or I could upload my own to make there. It's going to automatically adjust it for readability. It'll change the darkness or lightness of this picture to make sure that my title text stands out on it. So let's say I need to make something uh, for a specific subject. So maybe I need to make some grade 8 history resources. I could title it like this. I could take that and change my text a little bit or just leave it as default. Next I might want to put in an image. So the way I did that was I just reached down here on the page and double clicked where I wanted to put it in and I get this little wheel. From here I can put in text, images, a web page that's actually embedding the web page in this other web page. I can upload a file or I can select something from Drive. I can do all these things over here on the right hand side as well by clicking these buttons over here or selecting these components down below. So first I want to just drop an image in there. Maybe I want to search and find something. These are all marked as Creative Commons. You want to check the uh, check the provenance of them obviously and, and who owns them then it will be pasted right in. I can adjust the size of it just by clicking the handles and dragging and you'll see when I do that I get a little grid that shows up for sizing things. It's going to snap to those lines for my sizing. Next if I wanted to add something else I just double click and I get that text box. And so now I can add whatever text I need to. Selecting that text I can change the size of it or I can also make it a web li a link if I add a link in there I can add other things as well so again I can add another image I could insert something move it around however I wanted to if I want to stack these together I can actually drag this below it and you'll see the little bar show up that connects it to the other picture now it connects those into one stack that moves together so when I move it it moves all together on the grid you'll see I have a little guide show up that told me when it's centered or to the right when it's aligned to other things on the page to edit just this part, I click on that and I grab it. I could separate that out again. If I insert a file, I can grab from my drive and I can insert anything that I've already done. So if I go to this ILP file folder that I've been using for this course and insert that Google Doc that we created before, I could insert that and it will live right there in a little preview window. And I can resize how big I want that to be. And that will be a live document that shows up for people to look at. One thing to note, if you put things onto this page, they have the same sharing permissions that they do on the file. So you would need to turn link sharing on if you want other people to see the document. Otherwise, the only people that will see the document on your website are those you've shared the document with. Either as a viewer or an editor or as a commenter. So you always want to turn, go back and change... Uh, change the link sharing and you can do that by just clicking the little open a new tab it'll open that document and you can make sure that in your share button you have link sharing turned on either for DDSB or for external again another way that I might want to use that for my drive is I might want to include a slideshow so if I insert that uh, Google slide file it's going to go right there and that will give people a slideshow with a little player that they can manipulate and go through a slideshow with. That's a great way for, for sharing information that way. 
I can also make that slideshow auto start. I can loop it. I can set how long the slides show up on the screen. So maybe I have a photo gallery or something that I could make in slides and put it in that way. Dividers are just that. The little, if I click and click a divider, it's just going to give me a little line. So I can separate sections and make a little visual indicator there uh, that divides it. If I want to make a new page, so this is my front page, if I needed other things, I might add something in here and I might say early Ontario and that will make that sub page. I could make another one saying the Industrial Revolution and add different topics if I chose to and you'll see at the top it's actually as it generates those pages it makes the navigation for me right up here at the top. If I need to rearrange those I can and they'll rearrange with the navigation as well. I could also add one to the other and make it a subsite. So now when I hover over that, I get a subsite below. So those all happen automatically. It's very, very easy to lay out and make changes to your page. The other thing I can do are change my theme very quickly. So if I'm on my home page and I want it to look different, I could click on Diplomat and I could change the font style. And that makes a visual change very, very quickly uh, to my to the look and feel of my page and playing with the colors changes those things and you can play around with all those design choices. When you're done you can click on preview, the little I, just like in forms we had that preview. Now we have a preview of our website. This is what website looks like on a computer. So there's my documents, there's a scrollable Google Doc over here that we made earlier. If I wanted to open I can pop it out and get that to there. My slideshow is auto auto forwarding through and finally I can click on a tablet mode to see what it looks like on a tablet or I could go over to a phone and see what it looks like on a phone. The nice thing about Google Sites is that it reformats this all to fit those screen sizes automatically. So we know people are using a variety of devices and this will change this automatically. Next you need to publish your site to get people to be able to see it. So right now I'm just working on the file, I'm just practicing, no one can see this yet. When I'm ready to go, I'm just going to click publish and I need to name my file up here. All these dashes are kinda ugly so I might just name it G Suite and then I need to decide who can get it. So is it any by default it's anyone at DDSB. This is the only thing that elementary students can do. They have to keep it within DDSB for privacy reasons. Secondary students have the choice of anyone on the web or anyone at DDSB and all staff can publish anyone on the web as well. Then you just take that address and you'll copy it and click publish. That, that address then can go anywhere. You can make a bit.ly link out of it. If it's your teacher website, you can post it on your school webpage uh, to link your name. Your webmaster can help you with that. Or you could put it anywhere else for students or parents to access. That's it for Google Sites. It's uh, just a really quick, easy way to create websites. Now you need to return to your course home in D2L and check on the tasks for Google Sites.